Today I'm going to be talking about TwitchCon. There have been so many problems at TwitchCon. It's actually unbelievable. So much stuff happened and it was wild to watch in real time via Twitter. I'm poor plus school, so I wasn't able to go. And I kind of just wanted to talk about this. I have a list of topics here that just made my jaw drop to the floor and not in the awuga way. See what I did there? Uh, but yeah, we're going to start off this video with something that's very lighthearted, not as serious as the other topics here. The Midas shirt. So this is basically just the first thing I saw about TwitchCon. Midas is actually someone I follow on Twitter because his tweets are really funny. I went to TwitchCon with this shirt that had the profile picture of another Twitter user that's kind of known as a dream anti. It, it's really stupid, I'm going to be honest. But Midas had this shirt of the profile picture and the first people to sign this were George, Sapnap, and Carl. And you know... Some people weren't very happy about this. Like, they really, really didn't like it. The Midas just went around getting this shirt signed at the convention, literally not causing any problems at all. Uh, but for some reason, as Twitter normally does, they just got upset at this. But this wasn't, like, a big thing that made the event, like, actually horrible. This was just something I thought that was really funny. But you know what isn't funny? The Lenovo Foam Pit. The Lenovo Foam Pit was one of those areas where you would go up against someone and try and hit them off the platform streamers were having a lot of fun in it just jumping around with some of those streamers being hassan xqc ludwig and others playing in it and just going crazy because it's a foam pit come on but that all changed when adriana chichek jumped into the foam pit and broke her back she broke her back by jumping into a foam pit a, a foam pit and she ended up needing to get surgery because of this like she had to get a metal rod placed into her back. This is just very scary to see. Like it's a foam pit. How do you mess up a foam pit? Foam pits are meant to be jumped into and just do a ton of stupid stuff in there because it's a foam pit. And not only her, a lot of other people did get hurt on this, but they still kept it open. And also while writing this script, Adriana tweeted out that her surgery went well, but she has nerve damage to her bladder. But it's actually so wild and disappointing to see just how little they took safety into account with this. But up next we have treating streamers like trash. Despite some of the people attending being the top streamers on their platform, like many streamers complained about TwitchCon. There's so much that happened. I can just put this into like its own video itself. Like I could just go, hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about basically what happened was Saikuno getting kicked out, Cup Toast not being allowed to wear their box, misgendering streamers, partner lounge was just cringe. That was a lot, but stay with me. Saikuno is a YouTube streamer, but he still wanted to go to TwitchCon. But because of this, when he showed up to TwitchCon, he didn't have security with him or was able to have his own official meet and greet at the convention. So he was just walking around and obviously he'd get recognized. He's Saikuno. But when one person notices, everyone notices. So Saikuno just had a ton of people surrounding him. And it's a safety concern, which I get. They could have gave him like security or something at least. But instead, security went to him and kicked him out of the convention. They didn't even try and help. They just straight up kicked him out. And it's kind of funny that a YouTube streamer got a lot more attention than some of the partnered streamers got at TwitchCon. And along with safety concerns, Cup Toast, a faceless streamer and well-known artist in the Dream SMP community, they wore a box over their head of their persona because, like I said, they're a faceless creator. And I guess Twitch security had an issue with this because they said Crumb is a safety concern. Like, I know you should be skeptical, but come on, dude. But they did end up kicking Crumb out, which did make a lot of people upset, including myself, because I really think it wasn't justified at all. And another thing including Crumb Cup Toast was the misgendering of streamers. AMZ is a popular Minecraft streamer that had a meet and greet with Crumb, and Twitch was trying to be like, yeah, we use pronouns here, we're, we're hip with it. Uh, but I guess they didn't check or even ask the streamers about it, because they gave both Crumb and AMZ she, her pronouns. While both AMZ and Crumb both do use she, her pronouns, this is a list of Crumb's pronouns pronouns and AMZ uses any pronouns so they should have specified instead of just solely put in she her and another thing is that there's a tweet saying that one twitch staff asked another twitch staff if rambu was a they them like that isn't the worst thing ever but the way they phrased it just it makes me cringe but yeah one last thing in this section and we'll go on to the next topic the twitch partner lounge i'm just basing this off tanner's tweets because this made me raise one eyebrow to be honest but Tanner made this now deleted twit longer and I'll just read out the parts that kind of stood out to me. Some creators had an ego with affiliates and would only talk to other big streamers, hated the partner lounge and hated the VIP partner lounge even more. It doesn't need three separate areas blocking people off. Now there was more, but I'll just leave a link to it in the description. TwitchCon and clout and streamers is just all so annoying. And I think creators need to drop the ego because let's be honest, bro, you're not special. I've seen your room all day, myself included. But I did know there was a partner lounge 
VIP partner lounge and then what Isaac Y called the MVP partner lounge. Like if you're a Twitch partner, you're a partner. What is the need for three separate lounges to make the bigger creators' egos even bigger? Having a separation just isn't good because a partner is a partner. And then they also talked about the treatment in all these lounges and how they were all different. How the normal partner lounge wasn't as good as the VIP or MVP lounge. Clearly, the normal partner lounge was seen as less important than the VIP lounge because from Isaac Wise's tweet, it just seemed like it sucked. I know the last part was a joke, but like I still wanted to include it. And now the final part, the Dream SMP panel. The Dream SMP panel was wild, but this panel sucked. Let me put this on a timeline. The first thing, the line. The line was just not good at all. This thing was just super long, and when they started letting people in, it was just a mob. People were getting trampled, and there were some reports of people feeling like they couldn't breathe. After that already messy start, the actual panel, they didn't have enough room for Dream. But Dream didn't get a spot on the actual panel. They dragged a seat over for him and a microphone that didn't work very well. And after the panel got started, they would ignore female content creators that were on the Dream SMP by either not giving them enough time to answer the questions or people just not asking them questions as well and only giving specific questions to people like Dream or Quacking. And also someone wore a not safe for work shirt of Dream and George doing, you know, to a panel full of minors. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. That's never a promise with me.